Alice the Car Doctor, back again with another Chrysler Jeep Dodge product. This is the 3.6 Pentastar Problem, as I like to call them. This particular vehicle is a 2018 Jeep Wrangler. It came in for a skipping issue. Now, a little background on the uh, vehicle. Um, the owner took it to another shop. They threw coil packs and a tune-up. Now, this Jeep wasn't ready for a tune-up yet. It has 40,000 miles on it, and uh, yeah, the tune-up intervals is 100,000 miles between oil changes. So why did he do a tune-up? Did he do a good job? I don't think so. <laughs> but I'm gonna walk you through how to diagnose this job properly. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna remove the engine cover and just look around the engine bay. Now, Looking around, I can already see the last person went in here, forgot to secure, to put the bolts back in on the intake tube. Um, these bolts are missing. Um, it looked like they broke the crankcase ventilation valve. It's a nice little breakage right here. So someone went in and butchered this car. They just didn't do a good job. They're very careless about working on this thing. All right, I'm gonna pull the codes to see what's going on with it. All right. Gotta let that load up. All right, it has a PO302. 300 codes, I call them 300 codes. 300 is a random multiple misfire. 301 is cylinder number one. 302, cylinder number two, so on and so forth, depending on how many cylinders you got. So we have a cylinder two misfire detected and that's the issue. We're happening, so I'm gonna give it a start. I have a feeling what's going on with the vehicle already because did the background story, they took it to a mechanic shop, had a full tune-up done, and replaced number two coil. I will show you the number two coil. Uh, well, I can just show you like this. Two, four, six, one, three, five. That's the firing order of this engine. Now, looking at it through the video, it seems to be running pretty smooth. It's not. It has a slight little low to it. And today, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to properly diagnose any skipping issue without spending, well, you got to spend money on parts, but to make sure you get the right stuff, buy the right stuff, that's what I'm going to be showing you today. So, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get out my stethoscope and listen to the fuel injectors because you can listen to the fuel injectors. They make a little pulsating um, opening noise, sound like a solenoid opening and closing. Uh, solenoid normally make a clicking noise, like tick, 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 tick sound. So I'm going to listen to the number two injector and I'm going to correspond the noise with another known working cylinder just to get a good listen to it. But that's not a guaranteed test because yes, it can be opening and closing, but the spray pattern can be very weak or leaking or not spraying out properly to cause you to skip too or it could have low compression on that particular cylinder. So, I'm gonna take a listen. All right, it sounds pretty good. Tools I'm gonna be using for this job is just my simple wrenches, sockets. I got a compression gauge here. It's digital. Guess I want to be fancy today, so I whipped out the good stuff for you guys. Uh, electric ratchet, uh, regular ratchet, and a torque wrench. Very important. So I'm pretty sure you notice a lot of snap-on stuff. You don't have to use snap-on. Uh, what, I, what I'm going to do for you guys is put a link in the description down below 
some good compatible tools you can use at home because the only reason I use Snap-on because I break stuff a lot. I use this stuff day in and day out. You guys at home, you know, you're just doing stuff every now and then and your tools are not taking such abuse. You're not gonna be breaking stuff left and right like I do. So it's not really necessary that you go snap on. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get the intake out the way. The last person made it very easy for me, which I'm gonna be replacing all these bolts. Well, bolts here and nuts there. So this is an eight millimeter. You can use a flat head, flat blade screwdriver to take the band clamp off as well. I'm gonna use an eight. Yeah, the last person that went through this was sort of like a bull in a china cabinet. You can kind of picture that in your head. Or like the song, came through like a wrecking ball. I think that's how it goes. <laughs> all right, so what I like to do is try to get all my connectors unplugged because to get to this cylinder bank, the upper intake have to come off. So I'm gonna unplug everything. Let me go grab that. Got me some needle nose. I think that'll be a little bit better. So you want to be very careful taking off these plastic um, push-in clips because you can break them. So what I like to do, get up in there with some needle nose. They sell separators, which I have somewhere around the shop. I don't feel like finding them. That stick in there, you can just push it and it'll pop those, pop those right out. Now on this hose, I can tell someone been in here and they kind of butchered it. Um, it's all chewed up. Let's see, can I take it off properly? Damaging it even more? Yeah, oh, it wasn't even that bad. So they went in with a flat blade and just, yeah, yeah, just really ripping it up. Unnecessary. Um, I can reuse it. Look like they just got the outside. So it's gonna be fine, but it really pays to have, to know who's working on your vehicle. Because this is almost a brand new vehicle, only 40,000 miles. Why is it missing bolts and stuff torn up? It's ridiculous. All right. Move these vacuum lines out the way. Uh -huh. Piece of that. Did they break it and use yeah, they the hose to try to mend it back together? Oh. Yeah, it's just <laughs> ridiculous. Unnecessary. Alright. Well, at least they put the tins back on the bracket. They, yeah. At least they did that right. All right, so just want to give it a good look over. Just make sure you don't have anything else connected. That's what I'm doing now. Really take your time with, when removing intakes. These intakes are pretty easy to take off, as you're about to see. So these bolts should be eight. 
Uh, millimeters. I'm gonna grab an eight millimeter. You want me to push the table closer to you? No, I can't. Huh? What? Now, the torque spec, you see me re removing it with this. Do not go back in on this. I watch some YouTubers, they just impact everything off with the little fast impact gun. It's okay to impact it off or electric ratchet it off um but when you're going back on good people do not use any kind of power tools you can strip stuff out the torque spec on these are um 10 newton meters and i am going to be removing the fuel rail today i'm going to show you why after i do my test which i'm going to show you and the fuel rail bolts are seven newton meters Oh, this one wouldn't even tight. Uh oh. Seems like that's going dead. Oh, yeah. Horsepower. <laughs> All right. So I'm pretty sure some more hidden ones. So I'm just taking the time out to look. And yes, there's one way back here. So I'm show them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Some more hidden ones right here. Six, seven. And I think it's just seven. All right, got those last ones off. It's getting kind of hot in here. That's another reason I'm not a mobile mechanic. I used to be a mobile mechanic. Remind me to tell you about that story. I post it. Tell you why I'm not a mobile mechanic anymore. I'm in nice climate control now. <laughs> All right, and let's see. What's stopping you? This bracket right here. So it's 10 millimeters. I'm gonna have to remove that. I may have to remove this whole bracket out the way, but I'm gonna try to sneak past it. I don't think I'm gonna be able to, but I always try to shortcut sometime when I can. But let's see what happens. Hey, it paid off. <laughs> so that's the intake. You can see the bolts more clearly now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do Yes, this is cylinder number two. I'm gonna take out the plug to make sure you use the right plug. This is a new coil pack. You did say they replaced the coil pack. Spark plug socket. I'm gonna use a hand ratchet because I want to see how it feels coming out just in case uh, it didn't tighten it that good. <laughs> it was barely in there. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna stick today? Nope. All right. NGK, that's pretty good. Um, the recommendation, um, the recommended name, they supposed to have Ch Champion, but NGK is fine. Um, if it was something like Autolite or AC Delco or something 
down that nature. Bosh. That does not go in this engine. <laughs> but this is satisfactory. I'm not going to put up too, fu too much fuss about that. Now, what else I'm going to... What, el uh, what else I'm going to do? No, <laughs> said that wrong. Um, I'm going to take another number six coil off and because I'm getting ready to do a compression test so I'm going to disable the vehicle where it won't start because I don't want it starting up while I'm doing this test and I'm going to hook my compression gauge up to it I'm going to measure the cylinder in question number two and then after that I'm going to compare it to the uh, six number six cylinder and I'm doing it that way um, just to because some of you guys may not have the means to look up the compression um, the compression oh, man. brain come on brain get back in <laughs> <laughs> the compression specs so, I think on these cars it should be somewhere around 200 um, but you can easily go to a a working cylinder and compare uh, the suspect one with a good known one. So that's the my madness behind all this. So if it passed that, I'm going to simply move on to the next stage, which is the next stage is take the injector off. I'm going to show you how to deprime the fuel because if you go ahead and pop this off now, fuel is going to spray everywhere. It'll be okay, but it could be dangerous. So I'm going to show you guys how to deprime the system and I'm going to take the injector in question and switch it over here to the easy side because when I put this all back together, I'm going to run the vehicle, test drive it, and if the um, misfire went over here, I know it has a bad injector. So that's what I'm getting at to all this. Now, skipping issues. Let's talk about that for a second. Could only be a couple of things wrong literally a couple of things. Bad ignition coil pack causing the spark plug not to fire. Uh, low compression causing the vehicle not to, to burn the fuel and um, yeah burn the, burn the um, oh man I don't know what's wrong with me today y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna get it together. Though. Burn the fuel and air mixture. Uh, it has to be at that proper PSI in order to get the power and so the engine can be balanced and all that good stuff. Uh, and fuel. If the fuel injector is not spraying, something going on with the fuel injector, it causes it to run funny too. So uh, jumping back into it, kind of got off subject. No, not really. We're talking about skipping. But yeah, <laughs> it, it cringes me to watch someone put this back together with like impact gun to I me, mean, you know, impact tools. I'd be like, oh, don't do that, dude. Yeah, it's quicker, but ooh, it, it'll bite you in the butt if you do something wrong. So, I'm going to go over here to the fuse box. I'm going to do both of this at the same time. I'm going to deprime the system and disable the starting of the vehicle all at once. Oh, uh, yes, Christ. I know Ford don't like to give you the readouts on the fuses. They like to be stingy. So... After I find what fuse I need to take back, I will show you that. So I'm going to cut it right here. All right. Found the fuse. It is the fuel pump fuse. I'm going to pull that. And it's this one right here. So I'll just simply snatch that out. And what that's going to do before I undo the fuel well, I'm going to do the compression test first while I'm turning it over. And while I'm turning it over, the fuel injector is going to pulsate, relieving all the pressure on the fuel rail. 
and the fuel pump is not going to be on so it's not going to continue to build pressure so it's going to depressurize so when i do disconnect the fuel line it won't spray now if it fails the compression test i won't have to swap over the injectors because that's what i'm going to do i'm going to take number two injector and swap it over to number one and yeah and that way it'll just transfer the problem over there if i think it's the injector i doubt it's the coil because it's not a dead misfire, it's just a slight misfire. So that's the madness behind all this. All right, so I'm gonna hook up my compression gauge now. I'm gonna do this one first. And the way I'm gonna disable the starting system, I'm just gonna unplug all the coils. It's just easier for me that way. Unplug the coils, the car won't get any fire. And you're good to go. So I'll do that right now. That one is hard to get to. Oh, I need a flat A. Uh, a screwdriver. Let me turn on my fancy pressure gauge. This is pretty neat. It also does fuel pressure, oil pressure, um, and compression, engine compression. So, and it's Bluetooth. That's pretty cool. Um, what you can do, you can stick it under the hood and have it hooked up. And you can look at the reading on your phone if you have to, in a situation where you have to test drive the car and observe compression, compression at the same time. Right. So I should be ready. I'm gonna have you note the engine pressure. Okay. I right, turn it over. Yeah. This engine shouldn't start. I'm gonna make sure everything is out the way of the intake because you can suck in a hose or something like that. You don't want to do that. So make sure everything is clear of this um, in the intake runners. House up to 148. 148. Mm -hmm. Oh, it saved it for me. Oh, yeah. oh, wonderful. The highest was 148. Okay. That's gay. Me? Or, <laughs> or him? <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. It's <laughs> All right. So about 150. I thought it was 200 on these engines. Uh, all right. Again. It didn't even make it to a hundred. Oh no. Like 80, 80, 81. <laughs> That's not good, people. Um Yeah. That's not good. I'm gonna get ready and look up the specs real quick because I didn't do that prior to starting. Probably should have. Um I wasn't expecting it to have low compression. So um and this engine only got forty thousand miles. Low compression can mean a couple of things. You can have a leaking intake valve, uh, leaking exhaust, a burnt exhaust valve. Um, the compression rings are not sealing properly, but most of the time it's a head issue. So let me look up the specs and I'll be right back. So I checked the specs and it says if the compression is under 100, bad news. It makes me want to cry because I really like Wranglers. <laughs> that was the, the Gladiator is the one I want. And uh, it has this engine in it. Um, but next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a wet compression test. Now, when you're doing any compression test, the proper procedure 
is to have the gas to the floor, like flooring it and all the spark plugs, I have spark plugs out. That's the proper way. Um, I don't have to floor it because the intake is off. So it's getting all the air it could possibly want. Um, I don't have the, all the spark plugs out, but um, the, they want all the spark plugs out because they want the engine to turn over real fast, but I still can get a general idea. Um, I did take, it's only two spark plugs left in here because I looked at that one and I looked at this one. And yes, this is the lowest one. So what I'm gonna do now is take a cap full of oil and dump down in there. Uh, I'm gonna get a funnel because I don't want to get it all on the side of the walls. Grab a funnel. Try to find a clean funnel. Stick down in there. And so I'm gonna let that wash down in there a little bit. Give that a little time to do its thing. Um now I'm gonna stop right here after I do the test and show you guys if it makes a difference doing a wet compression test. If it don't make any difference, I can do more tests to determine exactly what it is, but that's more involved. I have to get with the customer. This is a customer vehicle to see if you want to go further with testing. But at this point, you see anything below the specs of what it's supposed to be. At that point, you need to go inside the engine. You have internal engine failure. Uh, could be leaking valves, worn out piston rings. Um, this engine only have 40,000 miles on it. It could not been broke in properly. They, these engines do have a break in period that you have to drive it a certain way. Uh, they probably didn't drive it the way it was supposed to have been driven to break the engine in properly. That's probably why they in this situation now. So, let's see. Uh, that looks good. So, I'm gonna carry on with the test. Now, a wet compression test, it helps the cylinder, um, the, the ring seal a lot better. So, let's see. Go ahead and turn it over. Come up, it came up to about 90. Do it again. Let me, oh, hold on. Let's try it again. Still below 100. It helped a little bit, but it didn't get above 100. As you guys seen on that cylinder, it was like 150, 140. I did the liberty of checking this one off camera. It was like 140, 130. Um, that much of a difference, I think on the computer it said it doesn't supposed to be 25% of difference. Did I say that right? 25. 20, 20, 25% different. So, that's a big difference. That's gonna cause an imbalance issue. The computer is gonna pick that up, throw in a check engine light, not getting emissions, the annoying orange light is gonna be on all the time, things like that. Uh, that wraps up this video. Do you think that it's still under warranty maybe? No, nah, I already checked with that. Unfortunately, this vehicle is out of warranty. That's what makes me sad. <laughs> I'm pretty sad for the customer at this point. Um, He's either gonna be looking at an engine or an engine uh, to tear it down and see what component failed. Uh, Alice the Car Doctor out. If you have any questions pertaining to this job, you know, write down in the comments. As you can see, I'm almost crying. It is what it is. Please like and subscribe. See you guys on the next video.